internet friends, welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. And I've got another new friend. I did uh, something with, uh, was it, I'm, where is she? Is it Mora? Yes. You and, got it right. And was your was it your husband? Jim. Jim. Jim Sweeney. Yes. I did an earlier one with Jim, and he liked it, had so much fun that he thought we'd bring in Mora, and Mora's going to make everybody happy. Finally, <laughs> we've been waiting. Where have you been? <laughs> well, I've waited over 50 years to do what I do today. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes. So where are you located right now? Are you on the East Coast? We are on the West Coast of Florida. Well, the West Coast of Tampa Florida Bay is the area. East Coast. <laughs> So you're on the East West Coast. Exactly. You know, which is good. I think it's uh, in my case, because I re relate to so many people. When you said West Coast, I'm thinking California, but we are West Coast of Florida. So I have a little bit of both in me. I get it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I will tell you this. My husband and I are New Jersey escapees. Joyzy. We just, both of us grew up in cold weather. We met up in, in Boston. And as much as we love the northern cities, we really like the warm weather. So it's kind of good to live down here. Yeah, my wife likes up here, but uh, I like the warmth too. But the humidity there is a little bit intense. The best deal is to travel north in the summer and come back down to Florida in the winter. Yeah, we lived in Asheville for a couple of years, and they call those the halfbacks because they live in New York, then they go down to Florida, and then they decide they don't like Florida, so they go halfway back and they stay in Asheville. You're right, you're right, which is a nice area. <laughs> So, you, you guys got kids? We have one child uh, who lives in New York, and she's 24, and she's doing her thing, and she travels a lot like we do, and um, having a nice life. Do you live right in the city? She lives in Brooklyn and works in Lower Manhattan. Oh, yikes. One of those New Yorkers. I was in New York a while back. It's a crazy place. You know, she is um, very much an old soul, even though she's a young girl, and she loves Brooklyn. And then she's told me, you know, I never go north of 16th Street in Manhattan, which cracks me up. But Don't. she does. She's found her spot and likes it. Well, you got to. I think there's a lot going on in that concentrated area. It doesn't You just got to go like a block or two, and you're, you're, you're where you need to be. <laughs> very true. So very true. Tell us what it is that you do for an occupation and keep yourself busy. You know, I call myself not so much an occupation, but what I do today is a vocation. And if you want to think about things that live in us, that live in our DNA, that live in our hearts, that we are so passionate about, I have a passion for seeing a happier and a more peaceful world and a world where people really get a chance to be who they are, to live freely, but also to live well in society. And so I'm not kidding you when I told you I waited 50 years to do what I do. I'm the trademarked ambassador of happiness. I have a blog. I do podcasts. I'm an international speaker. You can find me in Huffington Post. Um, and what I do is introduce stories, reflective questions, all designed so that people could go inside and say to their own soul, do I really believe this stuff? Is this really who I am? What's important to me for life? And am I doing things that have nothing to do with who I am? And the real, everybody always says, you know, what's your why, correct? Right. We all have our why. My why is growing up in New Jersey, I was growing up in all the ways that, let's say, didn't speak for who I was. I wanted to live in Florida, but I was up in New Jersey. I wanted to be a creative who could go out and dance, play with friends. And instead, I was indoors learning how to play the piano. Uh, mm -hmm. with a mother who was afraid to go outside pretty much. And I was supposed to be a lawyer, which to me is like living inside the box. And I realized that I felt very unfree and I felt very shackled. And so as much as you know, when you're a little kid, you have to do what you're told. I did what I was told until my mid twenties, left law school halfway through thinking I cannot do this for 40 years. And I thought, I am going to find out who I am, what makes me happy, what my skills are. And then when I got older and our daughter started going to college, I thought, you know what? We could keep doing what we're doing right now, or we could do things that are really in us, see what we're made of, and use all of our skills, all of our resources, 
every bit of energy we have and do what we can to find a better world. I really believe that the one I came down for is a better one than what than the one we've been looking at. And I think a lot of people feel that way today. Well, that's really cool because I think a lot of people do get in uh, into a rut of what they're supposed to do. Like, fortunately for me, I learned early. I graduated from high school in 1975, and I used to do magic. I used to do magic full time when I was a kid. I did it. A guy pulled a quarter out of my ear when I was a kid, and then it evolved through grade school into high school. And I was gigging at hospitals and churches and doing a private parties here and there. And then when I graduated, everybody says you should get a job, and I thought, well, why? Um, okay, I'll get one. And I got a job for Noka County Parks and Rec Department, got laid off in three years, and I thought, well, hell with that. I'm not in control of my life, and I opted to be a full-time magician. But some people will go through that kind of thing, and they just get into that 9 to 5, 40-hour work week kind of thing, and they're just stuck there because they, they can't get out. It's like that, that hamster wheel thing. Yes. And you know, some people get desperate at different times in their life. For some people, it's in their 50s. Mm -hmm. They'll all of a sudden lose everything they had, like the job or the career or the spouse or the house. And then all of a sudden, they have no choice but to find out something else in life. It sounds, you're, you and I are only a year apart. I graduated from high school in 76. Mm -hmm. The difference between you and me, though, Brad, it sounds to me like you had more of a strong sense of who you were and what you liked. With me, I knew... I knew internally the kinds of things I liked, but I was also very much the kind of person that would want to do what I was told. And I think that was where I had to like break off and break apart. But that piece of me it helps make me relatable to a lot of the other people that are saying, oh, can I do this? And we all have our place. Yeah, I don't know that I'm so much of a do what you're told kind of guy. I, I, to, no. to me, it was just logical that if I got laid off from a job, because when I got there, I got the little green shirt that had my name on it. And I thought I'd be there like my dad worked for many, many years in construction. I thought I'd be there for, a, I was a lifer. And then when I got laid off, I thought, WTF, you know, what, what the heck? Where's my, where's my gig? And I thought, well, I'm going to do my own thing so I can choose whether I want to get laid off or not. <laughs> That's just the way that my logical brain worked. See, now, you know how you're saying logic? Interesting. That was your brain, your mind, and your reasoning process. But most people, we're not trained to think that way. We're trained from early childhood, do what your parents tell yeah. you. Sit where the teacher tells you to. Study so you can get the grades and the subjects we're going to give to you. Answer to a boss. Get a job. Live here. Buy a house. It's all that stuff. And yet, if that's not who we really are, and you know, all of us have our own variations, then we're not really living true to ourselves. We're not living really happy, yeah. and then we never find out what we're made of. And it's not that it's always an easy process, but I'll tell you, this is what I have found, and maybe you could agree on this. When you were either working your day job, your typical job, or you were doing magic, because the magic was in you to do, which of those two things gave you more energy and more of a sense of uh, satisfaction? Well, my, my core thing is the freedom part of being able to do what I want when I want, um, going and working for someone else in a job kind of thing. I had to punch in and I had to be there until I could take my lunch. And I have a hard time with that still today. Um, I, I have a hard time making a commitment to anything, any date or something. A magic gig, you know, I'm up there on the stage for half an hour or so, then I can go home. But um, for a while, in fact, a couple of years ago, I got a job at, because uh, uh, I never did one before since since the... County Parks, but I got a job at uh, Godiva Chocolate, and I was just doing it during the holiday season, selling chocolate. I didn't like it, having to be there. It was just so, I'm stuck. I, yeah. I can't do it. I, I got to be able to, I need to be able to be mobile. That, that's why my business is run off my phone. I, I'm mobile. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that, but see, you know what you like, and then you know where you flourish, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, so what, is that's what you do is you coach people into that or help them or let, let them yes. see. Okay, cool, cool. And I you think know, it's, I'm, a story, I'm a storyteller. I've written several short books because I know that when people hear stories, they go from one reality to the next. They hear a story and you know what they do? They're putting themselves into the story, reading their own life story into it and thinking, okay, can I find a new way out of this? Especially where people do get stuck. When we first opened up before we even went, went on this program, you talked about competition. I never competed with anybody, but there are a lot of people that get stuck in that mindset. So I have a book about that. 
a lot of people judge other people. I wrote a book about that. And so it gives people a chance to kind of get unstuck by looking at somebody else's story, reading themselves into it, um, and then thinking their way through it and kind of getting a little bit freer. And okay, I think that's so, a nice thought. So you, you do coaching too, though, right? You know, people ask me that all the time, and I will tell you this: as much as you don't like making commitments, I do only <laughs> limited. I do only limited co coach, coaching, right. and I'll tell you why. I would rather be out, like on an event like this, on radio shows, doing public speaking, or doing podcasts, where I could speak to thousands and millions of people, right. rather than being one on one for hour upon hour with one person who says they want to grow and really won't, and maybe he's trying to draw me down to where they are. And so my energy really comes from speaking to a lot of people and then picking up whatever they want from And did, and did you so, say you're a storyteller? Did you, did you, do you write books? Is that what you do, or are you yeah. a writer also? So what you're oh. doing kind of is you're writing, and like you said, a person gets into the story, and that way they can kind of let go of reality for a little bit and, and uh, follow the story, so to speak. So... Because yes. the reason I bring that up is because some people think, I don't need a coach. I don't need anybody to help me. I'll just Google it. I'll figure it out on my own. But what happens is their brain kind of just reprocesses the same shit they already know, and they never get out of that loop. So you need somebody else to put them in a story so they can get outside of it. Yeah, and it's just my way. It comes naturally for me, but you're absolutely right. You know that loop? Here's what I tell people, and I do have an e-course the e-course is one that people could take on their own. It's got things to watch, things to listen to, stories to read, questions to ask. But in it, what I always tell people is I deal with the theater of the mind. We get backdrops to our mind and we live out of that reality. And until we could pull those things up, take a look at them and think, hey, this is not a good thing for me. Let me change it for a new backdrop. Kind of like the old-fashioned puppet shows. That's the magic show. It's the magic See? show. The magic it's a show. magic show. Totally. But people don't know how to do that. And what I do is I write in ways that people could connect really with their own mind, with their own soul, with their own true interest, rather than walking around like automatons that yeah. answer to every, <laughs> you know, every advertisement, every bit of social pressure. And I think people end up being a lot happier, a lot more relaxed, a lot more peaceful. And then here's the big thing. Then people, when they're free, they will do and be and even create things that matter to them. And I think there's so many things that the world hasn't even seen yet because everybody's too busy living in a box. Right. So before I get into my final question, then I want to ask you um, how to get a hold of you and such. I'm going to show you something that I show people as far as the shifting of perception kind of thing once in a while. So here okay. it is. See these three fingers? There's one, two, three. This one and this one, they're about the same size, right? Yeah. That's from your point of view. But if you shifted your perspective, this one looks longer than that one. Isn't that weird? You're right. It's this... an illusion. It's magic. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. But do you see what you did? You showed two sides of the same coin. Right. We oftentimes are only dealing with one side, and I usually call mm -hmm. that the victim side. Oh, little me. Oh, there's nothing I could do. Yeah. But if you flip it around, you see, wow, no matter what happens, I'm the beneficiary. So you and I are really talking the same language. Probably we should do this again. Things. This is fun. <laughs> Good. I, this is very nice. Thanks for having me on. I'm working out some live ones, too. That might be kind of fun, too, to do some, some live interactive. And I want to do a thing where they can comment and ask questions and stuff like that, too. So. I would love that. I'm very, you know, I'm practically better impromptu than I am when I have to prepare. I am too. So. I like to be asked questions and I will answer the question. But so, you know that Periscope and stuff like that where people are talking? I can't talk yes. directly to the people. I need some interaction. That's like with you right now, we can bounce things back and forth. We can show some emotion, some energy and some happiness or look sad or whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, dynamism that goes when you've got a conversation going on rather than one person. Mm -hmm. And I thought the same thing, which is why I've never done a periscope. Interesting. I have a hard time with them. I like to interact like this. So, tell us how to get a hold of you with websites and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to ask okay. you my big why question. All right. The easiest way is to go to my website. It's my name, Mora M is in Mary A U R A, followed by four the number. And you, the letter, because I'm more for okay. you are, I'm for you, moreforyou.com. Um, and on there, they could find links to all my blogs. I have over 200 videos. I have books. 
I have access to my uh, Huffington Post blog. They could sign me up as or a call, contact me to be a public speaker. And they could also sign up for my e-course. And I'm Got on it. iTunes and Stitcher. They can find that too for podcasts. You're, More for you.com. You're everywhere now, aren't you? <laughs> you know, and to think I started doing this in my 50s. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Which only goes to show other people, follow what you love and just keep going with it. And you never know where it's going to bring you. Well, you know, this is a little side topic. Everybody looks at this internet marketing thing. I think they put too much stuff into the technical aspect of it when it's really just about connecting with people and getting to know, like, and trust people, get them to like, comment, and share your information. And it's really just the essence of plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit. And by that, I mean the concept and then build the relationship and then the fruit falls off the tree and they become a client or whatever. It's not as complicated as, oh, autoresponders and capture pages and all that stuff. It's craziness. Well, Simple. you know what you just described? You described the, the typical way people get to know and interact with one another and develop mm -hmm. friendships, isn't that? So if you were to go way back before the internet, it's the same basic principle. It is, and it's just, that's why I'm saying that video like this is a way to know who you are and you're not some, you know, 15-year-old kid over in the Philippines screwing around on the internet. We don't know. <laughs> oh, I know who well, you are. Well, last time I looked, that's not who I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the big why question. And it's simply just why are you doing this? Why aren't you like a grade school teacher or a yoga instructor or a... a windsurfer. Why are you doing what you're doing? When I was little and I felt often unhappy, my grandmother used to call me waterworks because I was always crying because I didn't feel free <laughs> and I didn't feel happy. And my whole life in a sense was planned out for me to be this New Jersey lawyer. I made a decision when I was really little that I was going to grow up to be happy and free. So it didn't have a title on it, but here I am 50 years later and I am happy and I'm free and I'm creating um, an environment where people can hear new ideas and grow in them and I can help create a happier world. Is that a good enough answer for you? Because it is the bottom line. That's a it's, great answer. It's in my answer. DNA. <laughs> That's a great answer. And that, I always say this at the end whenever I ask this. I think there's only been one person that hasn't said that their why is about helping other people. Everybody I've done with these, I've done hundreds of them. And people are always, you know, they're trying to help other people. So hope for humanity. <laughs> and I am an ultimate uh, optimist. Well, I appreciate you taking the day today on Synergy Cafe. So, uh, Maura, I appreciate it. Maybe we'll do another of these sometime. I'm going to beam this up to the Internet and get it out to the world. Brad, it was so nice meeting you. Thank you. And I will be sure to share you everywhere. Okay. Thank you. Peace. Peace.